Hello, my name is Nando Prudhomme, and I'm an educational strategy specialist at Highlander Institute. This screencast will focus on strategies for practicing social-emotional learning at home. At Highlander Institute, we support schools and districts to improve the learning experience for students and families. This summer, we began work with the Fenton School District to help support your teachers during this unprecedented pandemic. Fenton's goal is to support teachers at the top of this pyramid to get to high quality, relevant instruction for all students. The challenge during this COVID pandemic is that not all families are in the same place in terms of resources and ability to support students in the home. We created this pyramid graphic to help teachers, families, and students navigate the most important and prioritize parts of the school process during COVID. The Fenton School District wants to support you and your child as learners, which means we must first support your safety, health, and well-being. The first consideration in our framework prioritizes these key steps for teachers in distance learning classrooms. As a parent of a student at Fenton High School, your child's teacher will want to first establish contact with you. Then they will want to make sure that you and your family are healthy. If there are any additional pieces of information about your family's health or ways in which this pandemic has affected you or your child, it's important that you share this with your child's counselor, administrator, or teacher so the school can work with you to make your child's learning as efficient and effective as possible. We know that students struggle to learn when they do not feel safe or when they feel that their family may be struggling with health or safety. As we work our way up the pyramid toward deeper learning, the next step is establishing ongoing communication with your child's teacher. If you're not clear what mode of communication your school and teacher prefer, then it is important for you to connect with your child's administrator or teacher to clarify this. During COVID and distance learning, there will be a lot of information that your child's teacher needs to share with you and your child's teacher will need you to keep them up to date on how to best support your child. A clear line of communication, whether it's email, text, or phone calls, should be identified first and foremost. There are many great strategies for supporting your child's social-emotional learning during distance learning. But before we jump into these strategies, please be sure to consider sharing your family's health considerations and preferred form of communication with the school as that will be key in making this year a success for your child. The third part of the framework is where we will focus for this video. It's really important that we are building strong relationships with students and partnering with you, families, to support your children. The first step of this process is to attend to sources of stress and prioritize wellness. So this video will focus on strategies you can use to support your child's social emotional wellness at home. No doubt these are very stressful times for adults. So imagine what your child might be feeling. So they might be fidgeting. They may have high levels of anxiety. So these tips may calm your children while at home or out and about. Supporting your children's sensory needs involve alerting them to activities that may help increase their energy level and focus. And these may include jumping and bouncing, climbing, stop and go, running activities, and so forth. You may wish to lowering down the temperature and offering cold snacks and drinks or fast tempo music. Or on the other end, you can have some calming activities to soothe your children. And that could be rocking on a chair or swinging or swaying from side to side, rolling back and forth on a scooter or bike. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, you may wish to consider warmer room temperatures. Once again, snacks, warm drinks, soft lighting, slow tempo music, and some hugs and weighted blankets and so forth. Sensory needs are impacted by a child's environment, so consider all of these factors. Managing stress and anxiety. Your child might be experiencing some high anxiety levels right now uh, due to loss of routines, being away from their friends, worrying about grades in school. Maybe they're getting a lot of news regarding the coronavirus and they're frankly worried, as we all are. Here's some tips on how to manage that. 
Share information that is accurate, age-appropriate, and reassuring for them. Based on their age and level of understanding, be honest about the precautions you and your family are taking and explain why specific changes in routines or plans are being made. You may want to limit the time that they're on online as social media overload can happen at this time. Devote time to calming routines. The combination of remote learning and families working from home is going to require a transition for everyone. You and your child will need time to unwind and manage stress. You can help your child brainstorm a variety of things that will help them to maintain maintain calm so that your family can pick and choose what will work for them. ASD Nest has a great website, and a lot of these tips come directly from them. Maintain continual communication. Continue to be positive. Provide opportunities for choice and control. Model coping and provide supportive statements. Mindfulness. What is it? Simply put, is being aware and attentive of the moment, aware of what we're doing while we're doing it, carrying no worries or distractions. Mindfulness is just bringing our attention to the present moment and letting go of worries and distractions so that we can acknowledge our thoughts and feelings. Mindfulness doesn't require any special training or procedure. It can be done by people of any age. And mindfulness can improve the mood, decrease stress, improve sleep, a lot of research on this. And it can even help lower blood pressure and manage the impact of chronic pain. Here are some additional considerations. Be a good listener. Send your children the message that their voices really do matter. So give them your time whenever they come up to you with, with any concerns and listen fully to them. Demonstrate how eager you are to give them your personal time. You're never too busy when it concerns your children. Also keep in mind that they observe everything you do, so you have to model good behavior. So if you're wrong on something, apologize and always be kind and respectful and always giving. If you show this at home, you'll be surprised how much they'll pick up. Building self-esteem. Give your child a job and congratulate them when they do a really great job. Perfect time would be to give them chores around the house. And if they do a great job, just tell them how proud of them you are for pitching in. If your child has an opinion, a very strong opinion on something that you disagree with, just value their opinion and always listen. Lastly, allow them to make great choices. Respect differences. Celebrate your child's strengths. If they're great at basketball, if they're great at baseball, if they're great at reading and schoolwork, Celebrate those unique talents and abilities, but don't ever compare your children's schoolwork to other siblings or other classmates. Remember, everyone is unique, so no comparisons here. When it comes to school support services, seek advice from school counselors or other social services. If your child needs to speak to another professional or another qualified professional, encourage that. Inquire about additional social-emotional strategies and efforts used by school leadership and teachers. We hope you find these ideas and examples helpful. Check out our website to learn more about the Highlander Institute and our resources related to reopening schools and distance learning.